まあ、に飲むな If we want to understand Mr. Mushroom, then the obvious place to start is with Schrodinger's equation. One of the most prevailing theories in the realm of quantum mechanics is the many worlds interpretation, first postulated by Hugh Everett III. The seeming collapse of the wave function of a photon first demonstrated by the now infamous double slit experiment is no longer an issue because the superposition is extended beyond the particle to include the measuring device and the human observer. Team Cherry are clearly fans of Everett's work, as Mr. Mushroom is definite proof of the many worlds interpretation being true in the world of Hollow Knight. Now, video games having multiple or parallel universes is not a unique concept. Dark Souls 1 uses it as a clever excuse to allow for a canonical explanation for PvP. Dark Souls 3 uses it as a lazy excuse to reuse characters for the sake of fan service. Undertale uses it as well, but I'm not touching that game with a 10 foot pole. But Mr. Mushroom is a bit more unique. Just to catch everyone up who doesn't know, Mr. Mushroom is this weird NPC that shows up in various places throughout Hallownest. His location is hinted at by this strange lore tablet located in the Kingdom's Edge. The tablet begins by saying, We speak the path of the Master Herald, he who would signal an age's end. Mr. Mushroom will only appear after the night has destroyed the three dreamers, so the ending age in this instance would appear to be the end of the stasis over Hallownest. After interacting with Mr. Mushroom with the Sporshroom charm equipped in every location, he will literally rocket into the sky like how I assume Elon Musk gets around. He then appears after the game's credits as the words to be continued are thrown on the screen in giant letters like this is a fucking JoJo reference. Now the fact that to be continued only shows up with Mr. Mushroom implies that he is connected to a future game from Team Cherry. And as we start to analyze his dialogue, we'll see that this makes like 40% sense, which is pretty good for Hollow Knight lore. So basically you can encounter Mr. Mushroom a total of 7 times in game. Each time he is basically ignoring us and appears to be talking to somebody else. Now, Mushrooms and Hollow Knight exhibit a shared mind, meaning they can talk to each other in a manner similar to telepathy. So it makes sense that Mr. Mushroom could be talking to somebody else. Once we meet Mr. Mushroom for the final time, he finally does talk to the knight giving a flowery speech about journeys and destinations and all that garbage. But what is more interesting here is how he has conversations with creatures we cannot see. Who exactly is Mr. Mushroom talking to? Well, I would say we know with a good deal of certainty what at least two of these conversations are actually about. Let's start with the first conversation. Mr. Mushroom mentions that the person he is talking to was able to save their friend, and also mentions that this person isn't hungry anymore. This is a pretty obvious reference to Hungry Knight, the first game ever made by Team Cherry. Hungry Knight was made during Ludum Dari 27, a popular game jam event. William Pellin and Ari Gibson used this game jam as a way to practice working together on games, and Hungry Knight was the result. In this game you play as the Hungry Knight, who has to eat cherries to stay alive so they can bring their friend back from the dead by collecting masks. But apparently this character we see in Hungry Knight is somehow talking to Mr. Mushroom from Hollow Knight, which in turn would mean that the Knight and the Hungry Knight are in the same multiverse. Now before you shit my pants and try to tell me that this completely breaks the entire lore of Hollow Knight, let me point out that Team Cherry does this type of stuff in other parts of the game as well. Let's take a look at the Shrine of Believers. In the Spirit's Glade, the Knight is able to access a hidden area full of strange tablets. The text on these tablets are actually messages from Kickstarter backers who backed Hollow Knight in 2014. Some of these are pretty interesting, like the references to Dark Souls, because you guys remember Dark Souls, right? This one is a stolen quote from HP Lovecraft. This one just says, the collective lives on. This one talks about a guy named Baron Robert Apples, who was the first of his kind to enslave a Gantress? What the fuck is a Gantress? Let's see here, uh, um, I'm just gonna, anyway, this area is guarded by this solitary moth spirit who explains that these utterings are from a group of people united in a mysterious cause who exist in another world. This implies that the Hollow Knight Kickstarter and our very reality are actually a part of Hollow Knight canon. This means that technically 
King of the Hill and Hollow Knight are in the same universe. So basically what I'm saying is, expect a Bobby Hill lore video very soon. Getting back to Mr. Mushroom, we have a pretty good idea about what his third conversation is referring to. He is talking about how the dead have no use for wealth, and how this person is providing for a big brood. This is a clear reference to the other game Team Cherry created before working on Hollow Knight, Tomb Cat. This was a game where you raid pyramids for money so that you could take care of your young. These two references are the most obvious. In fact, in his final encounter, Mr. Mushroom hints at these games again. He says, And if those stops can't be lovely things, wouldn't you say? Transcendent plateaus, distant sandy lands, vast ancient kingdoms. Yours was not the first, nor will it be the last, but it's a unique and special thing nonetheless. Transcendent plains, distant sandy lands, and vast ancient kingdoms seem to relate to Hungry Knight, Tomb Cat, and Hollow Knight, respectively. This dialogue also reinforces the idea that Mr. Mushroom is some kind of traveler, moving through the lands created by Team Cherry. But of course, this is where our track stopped cold. Mr. Mushroom still has five more dialogue entries we need to analyze. And I'm sure you're a super busy person with very little free time to waste, so let me just say that we are about to enter pure speculation territory. I have spent the last three years of my life thinking about this shit, but at the end of the day, this dialogue is just too open-ended to really nail down. Now, there are other games that have been produced by William Pellin and Ari Gibson separately. Through his job at an animation company, Ari Gibson worked on classics like De Blob, Mega Mind Mega Team Unite, De Blob 2, and M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender. Now, it's been a while since I've watched Shyamalan's breathtaking film, but I think there is something to do with Sokka's girlfriend becoming the Spirit of the Moon because the previous Spirit of the Moon was killed when the Fire Nation attacked. And in Conversation 6, Mr. Mushroom says to trust the moon. So maybe he is talking to Sokka? It's a giant mushroom. Megamind is all about how our perceptions of heroes and villains often lack nuance and tend to change over time. This theme lines up pretty nicely with Conversation 4. As for William, he worked on several video games by himself in his free time. The two most popular games like this are Return to Booty Grotto and Lulanda. Unfortunately, neither one of these games seem to relate to Mr. Mushroom at all. But of course, William has come up with several games that we only know a little bit about. When he was a kid, William would make game manuals for his own game ideas. What if Mr. Mushroom is actually talking to characters from these games William designed back in the 90s? like Castlemania 3, or Shadowmaster, Quest of the Past. In fact, William actually designed a board game called The Egyptian Game. In this game, you had to find a sphinx's nose while avoiding evil mummies and... Sonic? Now this is clearly just a shoots and ladders ripoff, but this game is all about finding a nose, and in Conversation 2, Mr. Mushroom mentions, if you have a keen nose, use it. This is an oddly specific reference. Also, he says to beware of those who are hunting you, i.e. the motherfucking mummies and the motherfucking Sonic. So in this instance, Mr. Mushroom would be talking to whoever played this board game that William made when he was a child, which makes a lot of sense if, if you think... Okay, this might be a dead end. Let's rethink this. We have five conversations left to figure out, but they don't seem to be referencing any games William and Ari worked on separately. Perhaps these are references to games that Team Cherry didn't actually work on. But how would we ever figure out which games these would be? I mean, just think about how many games exist today. There must be at least 30. Well, it would make the most sense to look at games that we know Team Cherry took inspiration from when making Hollow Knight. This includes Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, Fawzanadu, Paper Mario, Pikmin, Mega Man X, Super Metroid, Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow, and Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Er, wait. If we dig through these hard enough, maybe we can see some connection between them and Mr. Mushroom's dialogue. As it turns out, Conversation 6 actually kind of lines up with the story of Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow. 
we of course have the moon, where Dracula's castle was sealed away in 1999, as well as the double-crossing Graham, who actually is only interested in becoming the reincarnated Dracula, which he thinks is possible because he was born the same day Dracula was destroyed in that- I'm sorry, what was that? You have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about? Well, maybe you need a little context. The lore of Castlevania begins in the year 1094. Leon Belmont is a hero of knighthood, but one day his fiance Sarah was kidnapped. Leon learns from his bedridden friend Matthias Kronvisk Kron that his love has been stolen by a malicious vampire going by the terrifying name Walter. Unfortunately, by the time Leon finds his beloved, Sarah has already been tainted by the vampire, so she sacrificed her soul to enchant Leon's whip, turning it into the vampire killer. So Leon kills Walter, but it turns out this whole thing was orchestrated by Matthias, who then becomes a vampire himself and flees into the country, becoming known as Dracula. In retaliation, Leon Belmont swears that the Belmont family will hunt down vampires for as long as the game franchise is profitable. And so Dracula keeps trying to wipe out humanity as the Belmonts keep bitch slapping his ass back into his coffin for another prolonged hibernation. It isn't until 1999 that the epic Demon Castle Wars take place, and it is believed that Dracula is finally destroyed once and for all. His giant castle is sealed away inside the darkness of an eclipse, and the Catholic Church tries to erase all memory of Dracula and the Belmont family. This brings us to 2035, when the events of Aria of Sorrow finally take place. Two childhood friends, Soma Cruz and Mina Hakube, are going to Hakube Shrine to witness the first solar eclipse of the century, but they end up actually traveling into the eclipse and arriving at Dracula's castle. Soma learns that he has the power to control monsters, and starts on a quest to escape Dracula's castle and learn a little bit about himself along the way. To do so, he leaves Mina behind in a protective barrier created by Genya Ericato, who is actually Dracula's son Alucard in disguise. You see, back in the 15th century, Dracula fucked this doctor, but then she... You know what? Never mind. It's a whole thing. Anyway, Soma meets a cast of colorful characters, who also happen to be running around Dracula's castle, such as Genya, Yoko Benaldes, Hammer, and Julius Belmont. But there is one character, Graham Jones, who believes he is destined to become the next Dracula. He doesn't mention this when Soma first meets him, and Yoko even warns Soma to be wary of Graham. So yeah, a lot of this tracks what Mr. Mushroom actually says. Mentioning that the person left a girl somewhere, telling them to trust in something, but not a certain man, mentioning the moon. Not sure why you would trust the moon, but you know what, let's just ignore that. So that just leaves us with four more conversations to figure out. As for conversation two, the comment about not relying on your eyes and using your nose might be a reference to Pikmin, because Captain Olimar's eyes are never fucking open, and he's got a giant ass schnauzer. And there are numerous natural predators to the Pikmin, such as the Bulborb, the Water Wraith, the Smoky Prog, the Scuttlebug, Celine Dion, the Albino Bulborb, the Puff Stool, the Fiery Young Yellow Wallywag, and of course, the bike bull board. As for conversation 5, it mentions coming back up because things down below are dangerous, and that they could come back up and wander around aimlessly. Now this sounds like the general experience people have while playing a Metroidvania, so I could see this being a cheeky reference to Metroid or Super Metroid, since those games start from the top and then go downward. Also, maybe I'm just stupid, but it's really easy to get lost in these games. Conversation 4 uses both the words hero and time, so let's just say that's a reference to Zelda. That just leaves one final conversation from Mr. Mushroom. It's not by tools that you'll triumph, it's through your smarts, your speed, your determination. Now this is so nondescript and vague that this could be talking about anything. Paper Mario, Mega Man X, or maybe even one of these weeb shit games. So to recap, these are the characters Mr. Mushroom might be talking to, but to be honest, this whole thing seems a bit weird. Would Team Cherry really try and shove their own character into the lore of other games? Like, is that even allowed? It's one thing when Dead Cells includes a picture of the knight in their game, but to have your own character actually talk to characters from another universe? 
What if JK Rowling decided to tweet that Harry Potter did blow with Patrick Starr? You know what? Fuck the entire notion of fiction. From now on, I'm sticking to real stuff like true crime podcasts and professional wrestling. But of course, there is one other explanation for Mr. Mushroom's additional lines of dialogue. Perhaps Mr. Mushroom is reaching forward through time to talk to characters from games Team Cherry hasn't even made yet. So in this case, it would literally be impossible to know what Mr. Mushroom is talking about, because these games don't exist yet. Of course there is Silk Song, which could theoretically line up with either Conversation 5 or 7, since they reference things like hunting, gathering, and tools. Aside from that, we are aware of one other game Team Cherry might be working on. Another Hollow Knight YouTuber, known as Relia, made a video discussing the discovery of a trademark filed by Team Cherry for the phrase Fearless Fox. And after doing a bit of sleuthing myself, I discovered that foxes actually have noses. So this could be a reference to Conversation 2. But that's where our leads drop dead. Maybe Team Cherry will go back and make Castlemania 3 or War of Spore 2. Or maybe they'll finally make Ultra Dangerous Guys 64. So I guess I'll have to make a follow-up video to this in 30 years, once Team Cherry has made two or three more games. And so this video comes to an end. Mr. Mushroom is definitely supposed to be some kind of easter egg character that makes references to other video games, and in doing so proves that Hollow Knight is a part of some kind of multiverse. And who knows, maybe the Knight will be able to travel to different parts of the multiverse. Maybe it will make a cameo in Fearless Fox, or some other Team Cherry game. Maybe it will even help the Avengers by climbing inside Thanos' ass